Hello and welcome back to the river. It has been six days since I was extracted from just up here near Baruga and uh, I've managed to work out how to paddle the next seven days to Moama, which is just across the river from Machuca, by staying on the New South Wales side because Victoria is still in lockdown technically until tomorrow night but it looks like they're going to extend it for potentially another week. So. I can continue along without having to touch the Victorian bank, which is quite nice. So mum and dad drove me back down last night and they just dropped me off at the river, which was quite nice of them. And yeah, now I'm starting to paddle. But uh, after six days not paddling, it's going to take me probably all day to get my mojo back and loosen up the muscles again. But that's alright, I've got plenty of time. So 39 k's today to the first campsite on a beach in the National Park. This here is Cobram, so I was hoping to visit this town, but I can't because it's Victorian and they're in lockdown. But uh, I was just watching the press conference from the Victorian Premier and they were saying that they're going to ease up the uh, regional Victoria lockdown conditions as of midnight tomorrow night. So Melbourne's going to remain all locked down for another week at least, but uh, regional Victoria is going to start easing things up. So. That bodes well for not so much this leg, but uh, the bit between Echuca and Swan Hill because it means I'll be able to actually get out in towns in Victoria and go and do shopping and check them all out. But for now, Cobram, that's all I'm going to see of it. A couple of houses. So I'm here on, uh, at the Murray Valley National Park. So this is the campsite for tonight. As you can see, I've got the uh, tarp set up over the tent. That's just to allow uh, me a bit more protection tonight because it's meant to be raining tonight and in the morning. Uh, hang on a sec, I think the kettle's boiling. Uh, yeah, so going to be, well I only did 36 kilometers today, but that's just purely because the way I've structured this week to get campsites on the New South Wales side. I had to do a short day today and going to even be a shorter day tomorrow. It's only 30 k's tomorrow. So cruising into it, but at least I can uh, get some good campsites on the way and on the New South Wales side. But certainly uh, good news that the Victorians are going to ease up the lockdown restrictions in regional Victoria. So uh, it's going to make it a bit better uh, in the weeks to come. Anyway, I'm going to go and have some lunch or dinner or whatever it is. It's only about three o'clock, so maybe it's a bit of an afternoon tea and get ready for this rain to come through. Okay, so to answer more questions people have had. So the big one this week has been people asking me about why I would choose to paddle in the middle of winter um, and not wait till the warmer months later in the year. So there's a number of reasons for it. So firstly, uh, it's just when it's fitted in with life. We've had a number of other trips planned, uh, Tasmania, a couple of ballooning championships to squeeze it in. So this has sort of been the best time. Uh, also, I don't like paddling in the summer months, so I'm just not really particularly interested in sitting in my kayak and baking under a 40 degree sun in South Australia. So this time of year just is a much more comfortable time to be paddling in my opinion. Uh, plus I've got the good gear so I'm warm at night so that's kind of the, the main thing and yeah it's just really just been a really a case of COVID it's a case of well we've been waiting for the borders to open for the last year and they've opened even though we had a bit of a, a hiccup last week or this week um, it's just been a matter of timing and that's really why everyone else is paddling down the river at the moment too because it's just been the first opportunity that people have had to actually paddle down the river this year so that's really it. That's why I'm doing it this time of year.
Well, good morning. It is day 21. So I'm not counting those few days that I had as a hiatus during the lockdown. So 21 is today. And uh, as you can see, it's a cracker of a day. Uh, it rained all for quite a few hours last night, but that uh, tarp over the tent did a magical job. So the tent and everything was dry this morning. So today I am heading down about 30 kilometers further down the river stopping off in Tokenwall for a little bit in the middle just to go and uh, hang out and get some coffee and look at the big Murray Cod and just basically chill out because I've got plenty of time today and then uh, yeah then it's a few more days down till we get to Achuca. All right time to hit the water. <laughs> disappointed I was going to spend a couple of hours just sitting on the uh, foreshore in token wall having coffees and pies and just relaxing in the Sun but uh, it's just clouded over and got quite cool so I've had my pie I've filled up my water bottles and uh, had a coffee so I may as well just hit the water and keep going down to the campsite which I think I'll get to in about an hour or two all right back to the paddle <laughs> a bad view from my campsite here so I'm in a Waparana campsite which is in the Murray Valley Regional National Park again uh, but as you can see a nice little spot all to myself and uh, very convenient because it's right next to the beach and can get to everything in and out of my boat without getting too muddy so today was 35 kilometers I think so not a huge long day but it was uh, fairly cruisy, but if you can see over there there's lots of logs and stuff in the river so it's still very shallow and there's been a lot of zigzagging my way down the river uh, to avoid those as well as uh, avoid getting beached in the, middle of the, in the middle of the river on the riverbed. So a busy little day, but uh, yeah, very enjoyable. So I'm going to go and set up a fire and warm myself up and uh, set up camp. Good morning, it is raining and it is going to be windy today. I don't know if you can see the rainbow here, that's kind of cool. Uh, so day 22, got about 50 k's to do today, so that's why I'm on the water just on sunrise because it's going to be a bit of a headwind today, so I've got a fair slog. But uh, yeah, it just started raining just as I was packing up, so fortunately I had that tarp up so nothing got too wet and I uh, was close to the beach so I could get everything in the boat very easily. But uh, yeah, very nice night at the campsite. Nice fire going all night. And uh, yeah, gotta go paddling hard today because I've got to find myself a campsite somewhere in the national park where there's no designated site. So that may involve a little bit of effort and a bit of time. So I wanna get down there as soon as possible. Look at that lovely, lovely, Rainbow. Well, I'm just having a uh, spot of lunch on the side of the river here in somewhere in the Murray River National Park. This national park is pretty much all I'm paddling along today. So I've done about 30, yeah, about 30 kilometers so far. And uh, one of the interesting things that happened today is I have not seen a single person all day. So it's been quite uh, quite nice having a bit of a uh, 
very much a day on my own. As you can see, the sun did eventually come out, but there's a raging headwind at the moment, and that's freezing cold. The other issue I have is that all the sunshine is on the Victorian side of the river. So everywhere along here is in the, in the shade on the New South Wales side. So it's making uh, lunch very cold when I'm sitting here staring over at the sunshine. That's yeah, okay. So I've got about another, I don't know, I've got to start looking for a campsite in about 10, 15 kilometers. Um, basically I can camp anywhere if I can find a spot. It's just a case of making tomorrow's paddle a bit shorter if I paddle further today. We'll see how much this headwind starts to piss me off. It's an interesting process trying to find a campsite. So I started looking about 20 minutes ago. I'm not in a big rush, I've still got a couple of hours. Uh, but when you start looking, your criteria for a good campsite is really high. It's like, it's got to have a perfect beach with nice lawn, it's got to have a nice campfire, it's got to have a good view, it's got to be facing the sun, all the rest of it. And then as time goes on and as the day gets longer, you start looking for really just somewhere where you can fit your tent that doesn't have a tree that's going to fall on you and somewhere where you can actually get out of the, uh, the river without having to climb a cliff or wade through too much mud. So I'm not at that point yet but uh, give it an hour and then I might be getting a little bit desperate for a spot because I haven't seen really that many good ones yet on this national park. Well, I don't know really how to describe today. It sort of started off well. Um, and then I think during later in the day when I'd been paddling against a headwind for quite a few hours, I kind of got myself into a bit of a funk. Um, it was probably because I was looking for a campsite and there was a lot of really nice ones on the Victorian side, but I had to deal with uh, only the New South Wales ones. And I think that kind of brought a bit of a COVID funk over my paddle today. So, yeah, anyway, I think I've come out of that mood. Plus, I think having some food also helped. I got into a bit of a, a kind of grumpy, hungry mood uh, during the day. But you can see my campsite's not wonderful. I'm sort of tucked away in the trees there, but uh, it's all right. It's a campsite. I'll get a fire going in a minute and make some dinner, and I'm sure that will make me feel a lot better. So tomorrow, I'm actually staying in a caravan park tomorrow night, so that's going to be a nice bit of relief. Uh, so I've still got about 45 k's to do, so I'll leave early again so I can take advantage of their facilities in the afternoon. All right, all right, I'm going to get out of this bad mood. I'm going to enjoy myself and have a nice night and then have a good day tomorrow. Minus four degrees outside. Uh, I don't want to get out of this sleepy bag. I'm so warm. But I've got about 45 kilometers to paddle today. So I'm going to need to get on with it at some point. And hopefully, because it's so cold, it will be nice scenery to get some video of. But that's kind of the only thing motivating me at the moment. Oh, and that and a cup of tea. Oh, yeah. And having to go to the bathroom. All of those things are motivating me right now. All right, must get up. mental note to myself, I'm going to start putting my uh, paddle in the tent at night because uh, it's all frozen, <laughs> so it's a little bit slippery, so I'm going to thaw that one out. It's uh, 8 o'clock now, so I'm on the water, and uh, yeah, beautiful morning. I'm not so cold, it's actually not so cold because by the time you packed everything away, you actually get quite warm, so yeah, I'm sure I'll start cooling down as I start paddling. Well, 
that's an exciting development. That there is a cafe and bar. So that's going to be where I'm going to be heading this afternoon. So I've got about, uh, I don't know, about three kilometers to go till I get to the caravan park I'm staying at. And then I can have a shower and walk over there and have a beer. Very exciting. So that pub I was talking about before, they don't open till 5.30. Um, I've booked for dinner at 5.30 and I've just walked down here about 20 minutes to it and uh, they're not open yet. So I have to sit in the cold for half an hour and write my blog and talk to you guys. So today was cold. It was, uh, as you saw, everything was very frosty, which meant I didn't actually get out of my boat for five hours because I had no in inclination or desire to get cold. So I pretty much just paddled straight through uh, the 45 kilometers to Picnic Point, where I am now, and checked into the caravan park and have just sort of spent the afternoon updating my blog and getting the laptop and stuff all charged. And then tonight, after I've had my dinner here, I'm gonna go and probably hang out with some of the local campers that have invited me over for a beer tonight, which was very kind of them. And then tomorrow I've got 40 k's to go to another campsite and then another 30 the next day down to Huachuca where we've got the houseboat booked for a few days which we're picking up on the Moama side of the river because we can't cross into Victoria obviously. Okay, I'm going to go and do my blog and then hopefully get a good feed and a couple of drinks. Good morning. It is day 24. So I just sort of snuck out of uh, Picnic Point and out of the uh, caravan park because it was a Sunday morning and everyone was asleep and it was all very quiet. So now I feel like I can talk. Um, but I had a very nice night last night. I went and had dinner at the uh, Timber Cutters Cafe Bar, which was a nice place to have dinner. And then I got invited back to hang out by the fire and have a couple of beers by a nice couple of families from Machuca, the uh, McColls and the Cashes. And uh, yeah, watched the AFL footy game last night and sat by the fire and had a good night. So today we're doing something very different. We're heading south. So I've been heading basically west since the beginning of this trip. But let me show you on the map what we're doing. So the plan is that we're starting up here at the picnic point and then we're making our way all the way down south down here past Barma Lakes and then past Barma which we can't go to because it's in Victoria and then we continue all the way down here and then we're going to be camping down here in the Murray Valley Regional Park down at a place called Williams Campsite. So it's about 45 k's to do today. I do have to apologise for all my sniffing. I think the uh, the bonfire that was in the campsite next to mine at the caravan park last night was slowly feeding smoke into my tent all night. So a little bit snuffly this morning. So hopefully that will clear up a bit. Radio, let's paddle. I think this is one of the prettiest parts of the river I've done so far. It's just a... Uh, got lovely lovely trees and lots of kangaroos and birds and stuff and just nice having national park on both sides so it's a very delightful morning i haven't even felt like i need to put my headphones on and listen to music yet there is a wild brumby in the national park the town of Barma in Victoria, another town I cannot visit. There is my planned campsite tonight. The only issue is there's a whopping big cliff just there. I think I'm going to 
to continue on and try and find somewhere not on the outside bend. Hooray! We get to play the game of let's try and find a campsite again. I thought that this was a uh, good bet because it was one of the uh, National Parks' designated campsites, which it looks like it is because it looks like it's got a, a loo up there, but obviously no river access. So the issue we've got at the moment is that I'm dealing with both cliffs and really deep mud. And you only have to watch my uh, Murrumbidgee video, I'll put the link up there, uh, and you'll see what it's like to wade through thigh deep mud. So I'm hoping that in about three kilometres there's going to be um, another campsite that I may be able to get out at. Otherwise we might be climbing up logs to get over the mud or climbing up cliffs to get above the mud. So I just found a spot here that looks like there's a old campfire still simmering away there so I'm gonna try and get out and this looks a bit muddy but we'll see how I go because if that's a I want to put that campfire out anyway uh, but also if it's a good campsite I'll take it and I'll keep the campfire so someone had left this huge log still burning. It was just smouldering away, which is not a very good thing to be doing. I mean, it's helpful for me because I can start my fire easily, but not good when it comes to bushfires. So I'm glad I could come here and then later on I can put this thing out properly with some actual water, not just try and bury it in some coals. Well, I'm now committed to this campsite. Um, I've already gone up to my shins in mud. As you can see, I've just brought some logs down here and built a bit of a bridge across the mud so I can start getting the gear out. All right, let's do this without falling into the mud on my face. Excuse the uh, big shadow on my face. I was going to get up and stand somewhere nice to talk to you, but uh, I cannot be bothered getting out of my chair. So I'm just sitting here by the fire. Tents over there. Making some food here. Very comfortable. So today was quite big. It ended up being 50, just over 50 k's. Um, took me about seven, I think what time? Yeah, it took me about seven, eight, eight hours to do that. I um, only got out once, didn't have any lunch actually, so I'm pretty hungry at the moment. Uh, but yeah, I ended up with a good little campsite here, even though I had to wade through the mud and uh, dealing with a, quite a few flies actually, but they'll go away when the sun sets. Um, because I did that extra five kilometres that I wasn't planning to, to do today, that means tomorrow down to Achuka Moama, which is the sort of the finish of this leg, is only 25 k's, so I'll be down there well and truly before lunch. Uh, the family's coming down to uh, join me down there for a few days on the houseboat and we're just going to hang out, which is kind of good because that helps give us a little bit more time for the New South Wales government to work out what they're doing with the lockdown. So I basically can't really go past uh, Moama and Echuca with New South Wales' current laws because they're saying if you go into Victoria then you have to go into the 14 day lockdown and once you get past the Chuka there's pretty much no choice in not going into Victoria especially because there's a weir down there that you have to walk around and uh, so that's kind of going to be sort of what we're going to do for a few days is just wait and see what happens. My plan B is that if they don't ease it off before I need to leave again is that I might just sort of hang out down in Moama for a few more days and just see what happens. Um, the plan C, which is hopefully not going to be the case, will be to actually stop and go back to Sydney and then um, because we've got our ballooning nationals in August, what I might do is then pick it up again after August, so have a couple of months off, which is not ideal, but you know, I've come to sort of accept that that may be a possibility, um, but yeah, we'll live with that if it happens. Alright, I'm going to go and eat some food and chill out for a bit. Have a good night.
Well, I managed to get in my boat without falling in the mud, which I'm very happy about. So it's uh, day 25 and heading down to Moama, uh, which is across the river from Machuca. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a nice day. It's warm, but uh, it's very windy. So it might be a little bit of a struggle, but it's only 25 k's, so it shouldn't be too bad. I'm just decided to leave early because I know that there's a bakery and a coffee waiting for me at the other end. And after five or six days without a decent one, I'm looking forward to it. So that there behind me is the Goulburn River, and that is uh, Victoria's longest river. I think it's like 600 kilometers long or something, and it comes all the way from up in the Victorian Alps near, or comes out of Lake Ilden. So I was hoping that that would give me a bit more push down the river, having a little bit more flow into it, but uh, all it's done is make the river a little bit wider. It's still about the same sort of speed. So I'm about, uh, I think I'm only about 10 k's away from Echuca, so nearly at the end of this leg of the paddle. I'm nearly to Echuca, but uh, I've got a raging headwind now, so it's uh, making these last kilometres very difficult. So there you go, another week done. So I'm here with Echuca behind me, and uh, this is Moama on this side, New South Wales side. And uh, yeah, big week. I think I ended up doing just under 200 kilometers this week. So I've still got 1,715 kilometers to go till I get to the Murray Mouth. But it's been a good week, good week of paddling, all things considered. Um, so we're here on this houseboat. I'm just got the houseboat here for uh, four or five days and then hopefully we'll find out whether I can continue on beyond Echuca and if I can cross the border or not. Anyway, uh, I think the next time I'll put a video out will be when I'm down in Swan Hill. So it'll probably be a couple of weeks till the next video comes out. Hopefully you won't be getting a video saying that I'm uh, stopping the trip for a while. All right, well, I'm gonna go and have a cup of tea and get a beer and then hit the water on this boat. Catch you later.